Hello everyone and welcome back to another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add a vintage look inside of the color page to any camera and or lens combination that you might already have. It's very easy and very simple. I'm going to show you two different methods. So be sure to stick around for both because there are advantages and disadvantages to both of them them. So let's go ahead and get started. I already have a clip here that I'm going to use as an example. This is a wedding I'm currently working on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a serial node using Alt S on my keyboard. And inside of this serial node, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I am in my magic mask tab and I'm going to select person mask. From here, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to select my qualifier and I'm going to just kind of draw on the inside of my subjects here. I don't want to get too close to the edges, but close enough that it knows what I want to keep. Once I have that created, I'm going to go ahead and toggle mask overlay. And it looks like it's done a pretty good job already. Now, um, depending on the clip that you have and the type of motion that is in the clip, uh, you might want to either go to the beginning of the clip or the end of the clip. In this case, I was already kind of in the last quarter or the last third of the clip. So I'm going to go ahead and track forward. It looks like it kind of messed up a little bit in the arms here, so I'm going to add just a little bit more over here and a little bit more on the inside of here. And then I'm going to go ahead and track backwards. Okay, it looks like I still struggled just a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and add some more down in between them right there and add a little bit more in where her veil is. And I'm going to track forward one more time. This is a normal process for creating these sorts of masks. They often uh, require a bit of refinement after you do it, but it looks like I actually have a really, really good result. After I have a good track for the subject mask, I can go ahead and invert it because I want to affect everything around them for the vintage look effect that I'm going to apply. From here, I'm going to go ahead and just turn off all of my um, effects in my viewer. Uh, just by clicking off and then I'm going to also deselect toggle mask overlay and all I have to do here is just drag a radial blur onto this node and there it is and if it doesn't show up for you uh, I think this is a bug inside of DaVinci Resolve it didn't show up for me at first so I actually had to go back into my edit tab and then come back into my color tab and that seemed to fix it for me uh, but now it looks like it is working properly so you can see that instantly I have a clip that is in motion that has more of a vintage look. Now this is a really, really strong effect. Um, to actually implement this into any sort of client work, I would not make it this strong. I would make it way more subtle. So I'd probably go to something like this, like that, just to give it that really kind of dreamy effect, that vintage uh, look, uh, but nothing too harsh. Now I'm gonna show you a in my opinion, better way to do it, but it does require a little bit more work and it's going to require a lot more resources on your system. So I'm going to add a serial node. Instead of this node, I'm going to search in my effects for depth map, drag and drop it onto my node, and it's already going to start working on creating the depth map, but I'm going to go ahead and select faster so that we can work more so in real time. Now you can see what's happening, of course, is it's creating a depth map of my scene. Now what I want to do first is invert this depth map because everything that is white is what's going to be affected, and everything that is black is what is going to be unaffected by whatever effect I decide to apply. <laughs> All right, now we just need to make sure that we have adjusted the depth map to match kind of our footage uh, so that it looks a little bit more natural. So what I'm actually gonna do is adjust the far and near limits. So the far limit you can see is, um, I'm actually gonna leave pretty much just right there, but the near limit, I'm gonna go ahead and move back just a little bit more. And what this is doing is this is telling DaVinci Resolve how far I want it to go back with the depth map and separate the black from the white or the unaffected from the affected. So once I get to a place that I think looks pretty good, uh, then I'm going to go ahead and deselect depth map preview. And I'm going to go ahead and add another node using Alt S. And the reason I need to do that is because the depth map information needs its own node. And then it feeds that information into the next node, which houses the effect that will be applied to the image. So we're going to go ahead and apply the radial blur to this node. But you can see it's applying it to the whole image. So we need to feed the data into this node so that it's only affecting the parts of the image that I want it to affect. You can see if I go back to this this right here, I can adjust my parameters and you can see 
that it's actually affecting more or less of the image depending on how I adjust the parameters. For me, I think it looks good right about here because this part of the row isn't as much out of focus as this background back here because it's technically further away in the image and so it ends up working out. It's very cool to see what you can do just right here inside the color tab, no fusion or anything like that. If you like this video, comment below and tell me how you would use this effect. I'm intrigued to know how other people can get creative with it. Also, drop a like on the video itself and subscribe to the channel. It would be much appreciated. Thanks again so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.